Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, you know what, we are gonna try to beat that boss, Alburn, in the Endless Cloister Stage 32. Uh, in my opinion, this is by far the hardest boss we have in the Endless Cloister. Tell me what you think about that in the comment below, but did you, did you already beat him? I mean, on a hard difficulty? I challenge you to try, if you have a big account, to try to beat him on difficulty 32 and send me the details because I spent hours uh, yesterday, five hours in a row to try to beat that boss. I, I tried many, many different things, spent diamonds to switch my auras, etc. It was so freaking annoying. And today I'm back to it. And so you are gonna try, you're gonna see what I found. Uh, this is interesting. It is still not working against that boss, or I have a one team that is broken and that can almost kill the boss. I'm gonna show that in details to you, but before I have to talk about something really interesting about the this uh, current rotation, it's about the Divine cards. I'm gonna run the fight and you are gonna understand. You're gonna see that directly. So first of all, let's have a look to the boss, okay? He has 3,700,000,000 HP and the same value as a shield. So you have to beat him two times. But there is something else. When you destroy the shield, you have three turns to inflict 3,700,000,000 more HP. Dot damage or not. Because he is not immune to dot damage when he loses the shield. But he is immune to dot damage when he has the shield. And the best heroes in the game to deal damage are Little Jack, dot damage, and Dianmu Indra, dot damage. So it's not working against the shield of that boss. And if you can't kill the boss in three turns after you destroy the shield, he's gonna get another shield. 50% of the initial value of the first shield. So... 1 billion, 800 more million HP. And immune to dot again. So that's super annoying. And there is a way to deal a ton of direct damage thanks to a divine card. And you are gonna see that this is gonna be really interesting. She's gonna do three hits on the boss and then thanks to a divine card we have, you are gonna have an extra damage on the boss. Look at that. 200k only per hit, and then the extra attack, 6 million in a row. And this is only thanks to a divine card. This is the divine buff I was talking about. At the end of an ally's turn, deals direct damage by 25% of the ally's total shield value to all enemies, and it caps at 50% of the ally's max HP. And as you saw, this is just a huge, the damage you can do passively thanks to that card. But this is only, not only thanks to that card though, because I have many others that can increase my shield effect, shielded effect. That one can also increase the max HP of my heroes after they are getting healed. I have that one to increase my skill damage, and yes, the damage are considered as skill damage. So if in your team you have a buff, a resolute 2, something like that, you are gonna have more skill damage and deal more damage with the divine card. That one to increase your direct damage a bit more. That one for your crit damage, and that one for your crit rate. And also that one to increase your max HP even higher. When you have that card, the goal is going to be to increase your HP and crit damage to the maximum and crit rate to 100% on all your heroes. Because yes, it can crit. And so the more the HP, the, uh, more, the higher the limit. And the more the crit damage, the higher the damage you are going to do passively with that divine buff. So first, I'm going to show you that team. It's not working on the difficulty 32, maybe it can beat the difficulty 30, so it's still interesting, even if you don't have exclusive on that guy. And I know that he was given for free, so you have no excuse about that hero, okay? You don't need exclusive on him, the goal is gonna be to have the HP up 50% on your heroes, he gives that on the ultimate. He gives also Ripple too, so when you are using Ben Austin with Nordak, Nordak is gonna deal high damage on the basic attack, and so you are gonna deal more direct damage to the boss. And and also the same comment for your other heroes. Uh, then he procs a huge shield on the first active skill, 60% of his max HP to your uh, team, so it's uh, super efficient. Uh, remember that 
the maximum uh, shield value you have on your heroes, the, highest, the, the higher the damage you are going to inflict to the boss. But it's useless to have too much shield on your heroes if you don't have a lot of HP on them because you are going to be capped on your HP, okay? So it's better sometimes to increase the HP, for, okay? But the crit damage of your heroes, because it's going to increase, the more the crit damage you have, the higher the damage you are going to do with that divine buff. Then Nordak is here to protect your heroes, of course, and to grant them more shield. Uh, Nicholas to reduce the speed, increase your speed, and provide another shield to your heroes. And Lydia is uh, the key to deal damage in there. Especially if you have the S2D3. Because over time, she's gonna have a unique buff on herself, granting to herself more piercing rate and more crit damage. She can have up to 150% more crit damage during the fight, and so you are going to see that her damage uh, with the Divine card every time she's going to take a turn, are going to be insane. And um, also the Piercing Rain is going to help, because we are going to check that. You have a debuff on the boss. He has 80% less defense. So he still has 20% of his defense, right? And this is where the damage are going to become interesting between the 0% and the 20%. Between 20% and 100%, the damage difference is not going to be that high though. But when you hit between 0% and 20% defense, the closer you are to 0, the higher the damage. The damage are just going to go super, super higher, uh, faster uh, when you are closer to 0. Uh, so, if she has some piercing rate, she is going to ignore a lot of the defense of the boss and so her damage are gonna be just insane and you are gonna see that so I'm gonna accelerate the fight just a bit look at that 6 million damage passively 3 million with Nordak when he takes his turn 8 million when he uses the basic attack 9 million that time because she has a bigger shield 8 million another 4, or 4 million and now look at the damage he's gonna start to do 13 million, almost 14 million in one attack. And so using that, you are going to be able to damage the shield of the boss. And look at the damage Nordak just de inflicted to the boss. This is huge, 2% in one attack. And then her damage are going to increase over time. This is that specific buff right there. So she gets one more uh, buff there every time your heroes are using 8 times a skill. So she's going to push you the boss and then she's going to get another layer, up to 10 layers. And once she's going to have 10 layers, this is what she has at the beginning, 407% crit damage. Not at the beginning because she already has 30% uh, more crit damage thanks to that buff there. Uh, increases Lydia's piercing rate and crit damage up to 10 layers. So look at that. It's taking so much time. I was able to uh, inflict only a quarter of his HP in a hundred turns. By the way, look at the crit damage of my Lydia now. She has 527%. Normally she has something like 370% uh, without that buff. And she has also 80% piercing rate thanks to that. So now she is ignoring almost the entire defense of the boss. But still not enough. So this is the damage she can do now using a skill on the boss. So I'm going to lower the speed and you are going to see. She has... She doesn't have this, the HP buff, right? She has no HP buff from Sun Wukong. So this is not the maximum she can do. W almost 2 million per hit and now the divine card 48 million 48 million passively and on the next turn she's gonna have the, sh the HP buff 61 million damage at once passively she is insane for that and it's working so well so not enough on the stage 32 versus that buzz though a bird versus another difficulty maybe it might work this is just that that boss is absurd. He is completely absurd in terms of HP. And there we go. We are about to destroy the shield, the first shield of the boss after 170 turns. It's done. And that time, I have to beat him within three turns 
Otherwise, he's gonna proc another shield, I'm gonna have to destroy the next shield, and I'm gonna lose because of the total turns. So let's continue just to see how far can I go with that team. And there we are, 50% shield effect on him. I have to beat that again after 208 turns. I was able to beat only, to inflict to him only 25% HP. So it's just impossible using that team on the difficulty 32. So maybe on the 31 it might be doable, on the 30 of course it's gonna be, but there it's gonna be impossible using that team. Uh, maybe if I have a skill master aura in the team I'm gonna inflict a bit more damage and then it's gonna also depend on the echoes I am using on my heroes. So maybe I can inflict a bit more damage to that boss using that team on the difficulty 32. It might be a bit more, it can be a bit more optimal depending on the stuff you are using but it's never gonna work so I can just uh, quit the fight and try with another using Esther in the team instead of Ben Austin I was able to destroy the shield of the boss in 177 turns and this is the damage of Lydia using her skills you are gonna see that now she has 100% piercing rate, so she is ignoring the entire uh, defense of the boss and has a bit more direct damage thanks to Esther. So look at Lydia's direct damage now on the skill. Almost 9, bi 9 million per hit and with the divine card 82 million almost, that's huge! And she plays more often because of the turn meta increase given by uh, Esther. And the shield is back at the same time, so it's not better using that team. Then I tried to use something different. Jingle bed inside because the more the limited heroes you have, the better, right? Is it working that way in Infinite Magic Raid? Jingle Bell is by far the highest direct damage dealer in the game, so she's exclusive 3, she has great stats. Let's see how great she can perform. Using a Jingle Bell instead of Ben Austin or Esther is gonna be a bit better, just a bit, because look at that, already beat the shield, the first one after 160 turns it's gonna take, something like that, and she deals nice damage, okay, but it's still not enough, because you are gonna see, I'm gonna accelerate just a bit to see the damage she can do, 99% HP remaining on the bus, let's use that skill and check the damage. 1% and passively 13 million so in one turn with her best skill she can do only 2% HP on the boss so let's just continue and let's check how much HP remaining before the boss procs his second shield 19% HP inflicted to the boss before he procs the second shield, but we have a bit less turns than before, just a bit less, so let's try a, a, a bit more to see how far can we go with that team. And unfortunately I lost one hero, so over time it's not gonna work because you might lose one hero and after spending 8 minutes during the fight you might be uh, really really discouraged about trying that with, with that team. But it was pretty interesting, right? I was able to destroy 30% more HP on the shield in 30 turns, something like that, so maybe it would have been close to beat the boss, but uh, still not really reliable enough. So then, what if I replace Sun Wukong by Jack and Roll? I'm gonna have less shield, so I'm gonna be less safe with my heroes, but maybe I'm gonna do more damage with them. Let's check the result. Before having a look to the result, let me talk about up to it because between the 12th and the 19th of February, you are gonna have my promo code actor I am available on up to it, and during that week, you are gonna get 5% more cashback on all your purchases in the game using my promo code. Basically, you are gonna get 16% cashback using only up to it, up to 21% cashback using my promo code also. Uh, so you have many packs that popped out today in the game, such as that one, for example, one dollar. 
you spend that, you get a, a ton of excellent wishes during the week for only one dollar, and you get a voucher for one dollar for what you spend. And you can use your vouchers to buy extra packs in game. For example, I have one voucher, I can buy that one for one dollar. One voucher is equal to one dollar. If you want to buy the second one, five dollars inside, you get five vouchers, so five dollars, and you get a lot of wishes also. The third one, twenty dollars, you get a ton of supreme wishes, you get twenty dollars back in vouchers, and you get also that chest in which you can select the echo of your choice, non-limited echoes only, be careful. And on the last one, hundred dollars, that's a lot of money, so be careful every time you want to spend in the game, remember that it's just a game at the end of the day, and you are buying pixels, so do it only if you want to have some extra fun in the game, trying more stuff. You have inside six chests with two runes number 12, 11 or 10, this is generally the ones I pick and basically the price to get only this amount of runes is $120 if you are buying them from the uh, flashbacks there. $20 to get only two runes and if there you can get many more. So uh, you are also gonna get four Supreme Wish. That chest with only limited echoes inside of it. So that's a great one. And 100 more... 100 more vouchers to spend in the game, $100 in fact, and also that you get 1000 gems. So, if you want to spend in the game, make sure that you are both using Aptuin and Actar I am my promo code, you are gonna get a ton of cash back. Thank you so much for using my code and have a nice video. In a few turns, I already lost one hero, so let's retry because it was close to the beginning, but the damage were there. The damage were really interesting so far, so let's retry just to see if it does change something. And I lost Lydia again. Of course it's not working because my damage dealers have way more turns than before and they are losing their buffs, so it is not working that way. So what if I use Nereid instead? She's gonna increase the damage of my team and I won't take too many turns with my direct damage dealers, so it might be more interesting. Let's check. And one more time, I lost my heroes, so no, it's still not working with that team, but the damage were there. It was better than before with Stan Wukong. 70 turns to deal 30% HP on the boss was really interesting, but sadly it was not working. What if I use Little Jack now instead of Nereid? Of course he's gonna do some dot damage, but also some direct damage. He's there also to lower the, the attack of the boss by 40%, and once the shield is gonna get destroyed, he's gonna start doing high damage to the boss, so maybe it might be interesting to use that. Great damage as well, but I lose my heroes because the shield and the buffs of Nordak are not enough. So we have to try something else again. What if I use Esther instead? In terms of damage, it seems to be the most efficient I have ever built against that boss. Look at that, 58 turns, only already 34% HP lost, and 4% every time my uh, Jingle Bell is attacking the boss. This seems so powerful so far. But is it gonna survive? Just in case Esther can be interesting because of the yellow egg, who can revive, which can revive my heroes just in case, so maybe it's gonna work, who knows. So, it's dealing crazy damage, 100 turns and only 34% HP remaining on the shield, but is it gonna work? Are my heroes gonna survive? Uh, this is interesting because my Esther can give the yellow egg and when they have the yellow egg, if they die, they are gonna revive, so maybe it's gonna work, who knows? And no, I lost one of my heroes, he didn't have the yellow egg. 133 turns to beat the shield, to destroy the shield of the boss. But now I don't have Nicholas anymore, so he won't have the speed reduction, and so, and I lost also my Jingle Bell, so no, it's not working neither. So maybe I, maybe I wasn't lucky, so I'm gonna retry just in case, and maybe the result is gonna be different. Let's check. Okay, shield destroyed again, but that time my Nicholas is alive. Is it gonna work? He needs to put the speed down on the boss though. Otherwise, he's gonna recover the shield again. Come on, Nicolas, you can do that. Okay, speed down. I have a bit more time to deal some damage. 90%, 89%, 20%. Okay, he killed 
my Jingle Bell, but she has been revived thanks to Esther. So, maybe it's gonna work. If I break the shield, the second one, the next one is gonna have only half HP of that one. So maybe, who knows, it can work. I still have many turns left. And I lost my Nicholas again. After 200 turns. But look at the uh, shield remaining, 14% only. That's so close. And then I decided to try that normal team. Maybe it's gonna work. Because they are gonna have the damage of the Divine card to beat the shield and then my little Jack is gonna finally be able to deal a lot of damage to the boss based on mastery. And with that team, just in case I have the damage immunity that can proc from a Jack and Roll and I'm gonna have the attack down 40% given by little Jack to the boss. The damage are still interesting though, without the damage, uh, 60 turns almost 58 turns to destroy 20% of the boss HP, it's still interesting, so imagine when the boss is gonna lose the shield, then my little Jack is gonna start doing high damage to him. So it might be interesting to see. Okay, 182 turns, the shield is almost destroyed, so now here we go. Let's do some damage little Jack, look at that, 12% in a row, this is why little Jack is gonna be great there. And this is, but thanks to the divine buff, we were able to destroy the entire shield and now we can finally do some damage with little Jack. So speed down on the bus. Look at that, another 12%. This is by far more efficient than before. But if the bus gets his shield back, it's gonna take a lot of time again. And so it might not work. 50% HP remaining already. So efficient. Okay, another ultimate, 35% HP remaining only. He's gonna get his shield again. Shield again, 50%. He had 30% HP remaining, but that time it might not be enough. And I lost my Lydia, so no, it, will, it won't work neither. Oh man, is there any way to beat that boss? It's only the stage 32. 32, and I can't find a way to beat that boss with all the buffs of the shop. It makes no sense. Yeah, it will never work now. Lydia was my biggest direct damage dealer, thanks to the divine buff. And I lost my heroes. 260 turns, this is disgusting. 30% HP remaining on the bus. And here are the damage. Direct damage, Lydia, insane, thanks to the uh, shield, divine card. And little Jack deal his insane damage once the shield of the boss was down. Okay, I decided to try again and uh, the shield is dead. So let's try to see if it does make something different than before, but that time I wasn't able to have the speed down on the boss on the, his first turn, so it might not work at all. Was able to reach 30% HP remaining on the boss before the shield last time. And that's not gonna be the same that time. 43% remaining and he has his shield back. 218 turns. It will never work. I just broke the second shield and I have only 10 turns remaining. It will be close but it will never work. It's not gonna be enough. I'm gonna have maybe one more ultimate with my little Jack and that's all. So he's gonna have 15% HP remaining maybe. Or even not. Yeah, 15% HP remaining. One attack. One attack with little Jack. And he would be dead. So, it's not working. I can't find a way to beat that boss on difficulty 32. Even by having everything I can to increase my damage. I'm gonna show that to you. Uh, this is my Nordak. He has a ton of HP. He has that echo to have a bit more HP. I can increase that in the future. And maybe if I had more stars on it and more HP, more levels, it could be better. But I don't have that. He had a, a master, a Dwarven Blessing Aura to have more HP. And no HP blessing so it could be a bit better just to beat okay if we have a look to my Lydia she has a 44k attack and this is a different kind of build than usual she has more HP 768k she had a lot of crit rate and crit damage and this is the way I was playing her with a lot of HP okay so the more the HP the more the damage 
blessings i have some small hp blessings it helps me aura i'm using that one so combat vanguard five stars it's increasing my damage maybe if i try with a versatility aura on her she's gonna deal more damage with the shield i don't know maybe it can work echo i'm using that one eight a level eight only zero stars so it can it could be better than that also then this is my nicolas the I, I didn't change his build he has a lot of effect heat and speed and that's all and almost 700k hp blessings i'm using some freeze blessings so it doesn't help aura i'm using that one mastery surge so my little jack has even more damage echo i was using that one so it's not helping me helping me during the fight maybe i can try to find a better one i think I didn't use the the echo of a Rista, and maybe if I use that, if I use that, maybe it can work. It's gonna increase my crit damage by 27% sometimes, and my skill damage by 9%. I, I might re want to retry with that though. Then, if you want to know, this is, that was my Esther. A lot of speed and a healing effect, close to the 100%. This is what you want. So she's gonna increase higher your damage. Aura, she had that one, that's a speed aura, echo, I had that one, so she was giving a bit more damage to my hero. And blessing, she has some, yeah, silence, freeze resistance, and some healing effect bonuses. Then I showed you my son Wukong. He has 900 and a bit more HP, 67% uh, crit rate, so he reaches the 100% during the fight. 310% uh, crit damage, a lot of resistance, it doesn't really matter here. Uh, I was using some bl HP blessings on him and resistance blessings, some crit damage bonuses also. Aura, I was using a magic touch, not uh, increasing my potential in the team, and I was using that so he had more crit damage and, and HP during the fight. This is my jack and roll. Two speed sets, he has 900k HP, 3000 speed, and that's pretty everything that matters on the hero. Blessings, he has a speed blessing, plus 9 and a bit more HP. I should try to increase a bit more his HP though. He had a skill master aura 5 stars, and that echo, 1 star to increase his HP, 64%, it's level max, and uh, it's, he is giving a lot of damage to my heroes. This is also my little jack, 2 penetration sets, he has 56k attack, 266% mastery, so that's a huge hero. Blessings, I'm using that on him, he has a bit more attack rate and burning damage bonus, more effect hit, it doesn't really matter. Aura, I was using a versatility aura, 5 stars. Yes, and that's increasing a lot his damage, but it's only level 13. I should try to focus on that faction abyss in the future to increase his damage. Echo, I use that one. 30% more mastery, 1 star. It can be one more time better, but that's a limited time echo, so it's a bit hard to get if you don't spend a lot. And finally, this is my Jingle Bell. Attack set and devouring set, 55k attack, she has 84% crit rate and 270% crit damage. I think I can do way better than that to be honest. So I might want to retry with a better uh, gear on her and maybe it's gonna work that time, who knows. Blessings, I had some speed blessings? Really? I, it was to counter uh, Donald Rebelly before. And Echo, she had known? Huh, I think I can retry with her before ending the video. I'm gonna rebuild her and I'm gonna retry with her. Okay, I think that time it should be more efficient. She has more attack, way more crit damage and a bit more HP, so let's retry with that. Okay, so that was the most efficient team in terms of damage to the boss, so let's retry with that and see if it does better than before. But the problem with that team is that I wasn't able to survive. Man, it does so much damage. 72 turns, 50% HP remaining on the shield already. And I still have the apple on... not everyone, she procced the apple. Okay, but she is protected by my Esther normally, so sh I hope that she's gonna stay alive. And I lost her, come on! 114 turns with uh, her, with Jingle Bell, with the priority, priority on the first active skill. I tried to change that because apparently she deals a bit more damage using the first active skill in comparison with the ultimate. Okay, second shield destroyed, 185 turns. 
And I lost my only damage dealer. Second shield destroyed. And still 100 turns left and all my heroes. Is it gonna work that time? Yeah, shield again and another 50%. I thought it would be half the previous shield value. But in fact, it's just half the first shield. It's gonna be too close. It's gonna be too short. And I lost my heroes and they have all been revived. Thanks to Esther. The third shield is dead. 35% HP remaining on the boss. He has a speed down on his first turn. So maybe I have enough turns to kill him. 30 turns though. It's gonna be so close. I lost Jingle Bell. She has been revived. Come on. 20 turns remaining. 20% HP on the boss. This is never gonna work. 14%. 13. 12. 10% 3% Come on, do that! 1% only! He's dead! He's dead! 294 turns using that team! That's so great! I thought I, w I wouldn't be able to kill that boss, but apparently it's working with that team! Oh man, I'm so happy. I spent hours to beat that boss and I found something working. But you need only limited heroes as always. And the last one. One of the uh, last one we had. Whew. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, that was doable. I knew that was doable. Let me, let me show you the smart casting because I changed it a bit. It's important, I banned the ultimate on Esther, so she's gonna prioritize the red egg and right after she's gonna use the yellow egg. So I'm gonna have that more often during the fight and so she's gonna be able to revive my heroes as you just saw on the video. And then uh, Jingle Bell, a priority to the first active skill because th this is the one that deals the highest amount of damage. Uh, Nicholas, Master Research, Nordak, uh, priority to that skill, uh, so he has the shield on the first turn and so I'm gonna have more damage and also it's important because uh, you, uh, for no reason, my hero dies early if I'm not doing that. And Lydia, priority to that skill and don't ban the ultimate so she can uh, reset the cooldowns more often. So that team worked and I was close to beat the boss using that team also. So if you have the heroes, you can try that team. If you don't have them, you can use the other. And in all cases, you have four limited heroes, okay? Two difference in the two teams, but only limited heroes work apparently there. If you don't have them on lower stages, you can use other teams. The first one I showed you, uh, that one, but I was using instead Ben Austin and... Uh, yeah, that was the team, so you can try that, but you are gonna need Sun Wukong, he was given for free, even if you don't have exclusives on him, it might work, but remember that you need the exclusive 3 on Lydia if you want that to work, so limited heroes are mandatory as always, I'm sorry about that. This is the game, this is Infinite Magic Raid, so I hope that you enjoyed the video, if it's the case, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, have a nice day, and see you in the next one, bye bye.